<clears throat> I'm a cook. I'm a cook who goes out and buys the best local products around, turning them into these beautiful dishes that I serve paying customers in my restaurant. At the end of the day, I hope to make a profit from. These products were really special. You know, for years, we took all these products for, gather, you know, for granted. Pachatula strawberries, we're talking about our oysters, our shrimp, buster crabs, I can go through the whole litany of them, satsumas, Creole tomatoes, even Creole cream cheese. I always thought that they would just be there for granted. You know, my culture, my success is actually dependent upon my culture, connected to. My, my culture is also connected to my food ways. Neither one can exist without the other. And the success of myself, but also our entire hospitality industry that we're dependent upon, is connected to both of these. Now, after years of hurricanes, and it's ironic that I'm talking about this now, following what we just heard. After years, you know, the, we had Katrina, and then we had Rita, followed by another storm. Can't even remember the name of it. Then we have the Gulf disaster, the oil spill, followed by yet another sizable storm. And what you have is a culture that's under attack, a culture that's really fragile, and a foodways that's endangered. And if we lose the foodways, we're all done for. I'm blessed to come from a special culture, a culture that's best defined by its food. Think about the millions of people that travel here every year that travel all over Louisiana, but especially South Louisiana. They come here for what? They come here for food. I'm blessed to come from a culture that's special, something that's unique. Let's forget for a moment that we're under attack by the homogenization of pop culture as defined by Madison Avenue and the big box stores and, and international farming conglomerates that, that feed us on a daily basis. We come from a special place, and a place that all of us are connected with. Through food, you see, food then becomes that common thread that connects us all. Black, white, purple, yellow, red, rich or poor. We all love our gumbo. So where would we be without this culture? Now, I talked about the storms and the effects that it had on food production in general. I want to narrow this down to just farmers today. We've had this migration to high land, right? Now tacky strip balls of suburbia populate the truck farm fields that used to feed us. We're pushing our farmers further and further out. We're putting our farmers out of business. When the farmers go, where will I get these great ingredients that, that millions of people, tens of millions of people travel every year to come to? Where will they come from? And if we turn into any town USA, will the tens of millions still come? So years of working with farmers, I'm talking about almost two decades here of, of working with and supporting those people that I depend on, that we depend on. We found that most of our farmers didn't have access to capital. And most of them still yet didn't have the business acumen needed to truly be profitable in today's highly competitive economy. So with some help of some very smart friends, we created a microloan program appropriately named Milk Money. Now, Milk Money had its start. I just love saying that, Milk Money. Milk Money had its start because we started working with um, the Mote family. And the Mote family had been four or five generations um, dairy farming family, big, strong family business. They did things the right way, perhaps the last, offering non-homogenized milk. Of cattle, they're antibiotic and hormone-free. I mean, these people were doing it right. But they got hit pretty hard by Hurricane Katrina, and they lost part of their milk barn. The Southern Foodways Alliance and the Slow Foods Movement both credit the Motay family with 
being caretakers of a great culinary tradition called Creole cream cheese. Now, allow me a little tangent here. Creole cream cheese, if any of you don't know, it, it's, it's a fresh farmer's cheese well known around New Orleans. It's creamy, subtly sweet, and it's balanced with a bracing tartness, I guess. The tartness that you get when you bite into a green apple, a good Granny Smith apple, and you just get it in the back of your, in your, in your cheeks. I love it on hot French bread, just slathered over the top with maybe some herbs. I love basil. If you want to chop some chives, throw those on there too. And maybe some flaky, crunchy sea salt. And I can just devour it. I can taste it right now as I'm explaining it to you. Other friends, I love food. <laughs> Other friends of mine, they like to take it and mix it with sugar and just a little bit of heavy cream and pour it over those Pachatula strawberries. This is good stuff, and this is the stuff we need to fight for. This is part of our culture. But unfortunately, it was lost. It was lost in Hurricane Katrina. And what ended up happening is that the family broke up. The daughters had to go elsewhere and find employment for the first time outside of the family business. Mom and dad stayed at the, uh, stayed at the dairy and did the best that they could just to keep their heads above water. But they were going nowhere fast. Until they struck a deal with a local school, offering, them, offering to sell them incredible milk for their children to drink. So they go to their bank, and the bank wanted nothing to do with the small family farm. And so we stepped in, and we created milk money really around them. And it's a microloan where we made the capital available to them at virtually no interest. Not only did they buy the cattle and make the repairs necessary to, to get back on their feet, we also partnered them with a team of MBA students, Tulane University. And they not only built a business plan around this dairy, but they also played an active role in not just the marketing, but also the sales and, and the distribution of their products and created an even broader product line. This product line now consists of these incredible Creole cream cheesecakes, and you can find them from Baton Rouge to the coast. You have to go to the farmer's markets. Or from New Orleans up to Jackson, and little private stores in between. This is good stuff. They've almost paid back all of their loan, and now they're an inspiration to what can happen if we work with people in the right way, if we connect. And we work with a lot of farmers. I want to talk about John Bartlett. John is extremely talented, passionate, applying great, you know, in a very innovative, sustainable uh, practices to his farm, as most of our farmers do. But, you know, this guy has the most diverse product line that I've ever heard of. Not only does he sell cut flowers and poultry and eggs, but he has the most incredible produce and he's planting in such a way, he, he plants it in an intensive uh, farming method where we have virtually every month a new product coming out. And so he is cre creating commerce along the way every month. And so what also makes him different is that he's young and he's in his early 30s when most of the people that we deal with are in their, they're at least 60 years old or older. And so it's important that we bring in a new group of people, a group of people, a younger group of people with new ideas that want to break some rules and want to, want to now think about the future. How do we create more farmers like John? And we do that by investing in people that are making a difference in their community. Connectivity is the basis of culture. It's that fabric that we're all woven into and none of us can escape it. We are dependent upon the farmers, and I'm proud that Milk Money's made a huge contribution to, to a number of the families in our region. It's making a difference on a daily basis. But I'm even more proud that the farmers are sustaining us. They're sustaining our culture. You see, what this is really all about, it's not the cultivation of food as much as it is the cultivation of humanity. Thank you.